This is only the beginning. In the next few months, I hope to demonstrate that I can recombine this combustible air with vital air and transform them both back into water. I will recreate exactly the same amount of water that was lost here in this process. It is my hope to complete the cycle, water into gas, into water. And not a drop lost. For a long time, Lavoisier had suspected that the exact amount of matter, the mass, involved in any transformation was always conserved. But to prove this, he had to perform thousands of experiments, and he had to do the measurements with incredible accuracy. That's where his great wealth from being a tax collector came in. He could afford to commission the most sensitive instruments ever built. He became obsessed with accuracy. لكن وسائل لافوازيه الصارمه في دقتها بدات ايضا تثير غضب الباريسيين الجائعين المتذمرين claims to have made a great discovery. Oh, Antoine, have you forgotten? Oh, God. There's another charlatan with an idea to peddle. God give me patience. <coughs> ah, Monsieur Marat. Ah, Monsieur. I have invented a device which projects an image of the substance of fire onto a screen. You see? Mm. When a lantern is shone through a flame, we see a shimmering pattern above the flame. My device renders the substance of fire visible. Have you collected it, the substance of fire? Have you, have you trapped it and measured it? Well, no, but, but one can see it. I'm sorry, in the absence of exact measurements, of, of precise observations, without rigorous reasoning, one can only be engaging in conjecture, so this is not science. I am not given to conjecture, monsieur. Really? No. no. If you will excuse me, I, I am extremely busy today, but thank you. Thank you. So that is all? Then good day, monsieur! Let me guess, Mara. The king's scientific despot has decreed that your invention does not conform to the version of the truth as laid down by the Academy. Lavoisier. He talks about facts. He worships the truth. Listen to me, my friend. They are all the same, the Royal Academies. They insult the liberty of the mind. They think... They are the sole arbiters of genius. They are rotten to the core, just like every other tentacle of the king. The people, it is they who will determine right and wrong. Don't worry. In my next pamphlet, I will expose this persecutor of yours. طوال سنوات قامت جماعة لافوازيا بحرق وقص وصهر وغلي كل مادة في المتناول بيّنوا أنه إذا كان المرء دقيقا في جمع كل الأبخرة والسوائل والذرور الناتجة عن عمليات التحويل فسيجد أن الكتلة لا تنقص 
السوائل قد تتحول الى غازات والمعادن قد تصدأ والخشب قد يصبح رمادا ودخانا لكن المادة تلك الذرات الدقيقة التي تتشكل منها كل عناصر المادة لا تتبدد ابدا وقد توج هذا الاكتشاف باستخدامهم المميز للكهرباء الساكنة لاعادة تركيب الاكسجين والهيدروجين كماء عندما انفجرت الثورة الفرنسية تم اعدام العائلة الملكية ورموز الطبقة الارستقراطية بالمفصلة To the French revolutionaries of 1790, Lavoisier meant one thing and one thing only. He was the despised tax collector who built that wall around Paris. وظيفة لافوازيه كجامع ضرائب سلطت الشكوك حوله. لقد أدانه جان بول مارات العالم الفاشل الذي تحول إلى صحفي راديكالي. What Lavoisier did is absolutely central to science and especially to equals MC squared. Because what he said is if you take a bunch of matter, you can break it apart, you can recombine it, you can do anything to it, and the stuff of the matter won't go away. If the mob burned Paris to the ground, utterly raised it, shattered the bricks into rubble and dust, and burned the buildings into ashes and smoke, turns out if you put a huge dome over Paris and weighed all the smoke and all the ashes and all the rubble, it would add up to the exact same weight as the original city in the air around it before. Nothing disappears. بعد قرن من ذلك الزمن تم تصنيف الطبيعة الى نوعين الطاقة القوى التي تحرك الاشياء والكتلة وهي المواد التي تتشكل منها تلك الاشياء علوم القرن التاسع عشر كلها استندت الى هذين التصنيفين الاساسيين القوانين التي كانت تحكم احدها لم تكن تنطبق على الاخر لكن اينشتاين الشاب حديث العهد بالفيزياء لم يكن يحب القوانين It is more than a little ironic having been reprimanded yesterday by that idiot Professor Perney for poor attendance that I should in fact attend a practical lesson which was as long as it was boring and utterly pointless by the way only to be the victim of an explosion of my own apparatus. So it was your own fault then? Thank you. And how are you today? Fraulein Manich? Extremely well, Herr Einstein. All the better for seeing you have escaped the physics laboratory with your life. Well, in order not to alarm you any further, I pledge to forever continue my studies here at the Café Bahnhof, reading only the great masters of theoretical physics and eschewing the babbling nonsense of the polytechnicians. <laughs> It's about all you ever do. 
It's getting a little stuffy in here, Fraulein Marich. Would you care 